I'd like to invite the, our worship team, uh, those who are participating in serving uh, today to gather uh, in front and we're going to have a short word of prayer. Let us pray. O holy God, our Lord God of hosts, we give you thanks for this wonderful morning, for a morning we can gather to worship you and to give you praise, a morning that we gather also to remember, remember those who paid the sacrifice in the two world wars, Remember those members of the Canadian Armed Forces who continue to serve uh, the country in various parts of peacekeeping missions around the world. Lord, we pray that as we are gathered here uh, to remember the sacrifice of these individuals, help us to remember also of you, of your faithfulness, of your graciousness of you, Lord, who is in charge, in command, sovereign, and in control. In this ever-changing world, Lord, we continue to look towards you as our rock and as our redeemer. We thank you for you, for your love and your faithfulness never change. And we thank you that in the world uh, that often changes, you continue to be there for us. Help us today to remember, help us today um, to give thanks to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray, amen. Welcome to St. Giles Presbyterian Church. 
We are a, a caring community of faith here in the heart of the Glebe in Ottawa. My name is Paul Wu. I'm a minister of the congregation, and uh, I'm also uh, your worship leader this morning. Today is Remembrance Sunday, and uh, I'd like to uh, direct your attention uh, to St. Giles Memorial plaque here in the front. Um, and uh, often we worship here and, and, and we're not, sometimes this plaque is blocked by the screen, and, um, but uh, this is um, a plaque containing the names of those uh, in St. Giles who served uh, during the wars uh, and, and also those uh, who paid the sacrifice uh, with their lives. Um, also direct your attention to uh, uh, two memorials set up at the back and the far corner. Uh, one is a Cushman Memorial uh, and the other is the Row of Honor from Zion Presbyterian Church. Uh, these two congregation were merged uh, with us. Uh, so uh, uh, the name of those who served during the wars uh, are listed there and, those, and also with asterisk denoting those uh, who, who died during the war. I'd like to also acknowledge um, representatives from the Cameron Highlanders uh, today with us. Uh, I know that uh, here in my list, uh, there's a, a, a Gort Sharp uh, commanding officer of the regiment, uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Gort Sharp uh, of the Cameron Highlanders. And uh, Jeffrey Hill, uh, he is the president of the uh, Regimental Association. Welcome, Jeffrey. Um, we have uh, at the back end, um, in the, uh, in the, on top, uh, we have the Piper, uh, Brandon Pinkerton Cock, uh, and uh, Corporal Brandon, and uh, also Bugler, uh, Master Corporal, uh, Corporal Peter uh, Lineburner, and welcome. Uh, St. <coughs> St. Giles is a regimental church uh, of the Camerons, uh, and this relationship has existed since 1940, uh, when the regimental stentor uh, uh, was deposited uh, here at the front of the sanctuary for safekeeping. And uh, we're proud of this historical and ongoing relationship uh, with the Cameron Highlanders. Uh, and uh, so we'll, we welcome you to be with us. Um, and also before uh, we go on to our worship, I also want to acknowledge uh, that on uh, November 8th, uh, which is, uh, I believe tomorrow, uh, is also the National Aboriginal Veterans Day. Uh, so with that in mind, I'd like to acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional uh, unceded territory of the Algonquin and Anishinaabe people. And the Algonquin people have been living here since time immemorial, and we are <coughs> uh, honored to, to have this opportunity to gather in this land. Um, I'd like to invite you to this responsive call to worship that is printed in the bulletin. Happy are those whose hope is in the Lord, for God keeps faith with us forever. Praise our God who brings justice for the oppressed and give, gives food to the hungry. We will worship the Lord who lifts up those who are bowed down and support the orphan and widows. God will reign in mercy and righteousness for all generations. Let us praise the Lord and seek to honor God with our lives. Let us now sing hymn 330, O God, our help is in ages past. We'll sing verse 1, 2, 4, and 6.
Please join me in this prayer. Let us pray. O God of justice and peace, we gather at the solemn time of the year, aware of the costliness of human history. In the face of hostility between nations and neighbors, you have come to us in Jesus Christ, carrying no sword, calling us to serve as peacemakers. In this time of worship, renew in us the hope that you will turn swords into plowshares and lead the world you love away from the study of war to the promise of peace with justice for all your peoples. And our prayer continues in this unison prayer of confession. God of justice and mercy, we confess that the world around us is in a mess. Countries turn disputes over territories into threats of terror. All enemies stir up conflicts within their tribes and nations. Threats of violence keep us all on edge. We confess we have not learned from past conflicts that leads to peace with justice among the nations and neighbors. Forgive us and lead us in a better way. And our prayer concludes with the prayer that the Lord has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, do I give to you. Friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, though God's mercy, through God's mercy, our sin is forgiven, and may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. In this act of remembrance, we will begin by singing O Canada, our national anthem. <laughs> God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. As we humble ourselves in God's presence and make solemn remembrance of the great things that have been done for us, we earnestly seek God's mercy and grace. Once more, we pause to remember the four members of Zion who died in World War II and the 11 members of St. Giles who paid the supreme sacrifice in World War II. They rest peacefully from Berlin across Europe to the depth of the Atlantic Ocean. Let us remember also those 
who have given their lives in our country's duty of peacekeeping and peacemaking, including the recent UN mission in Mali and Haiti. And let us not forget those who serve in the NATO's mission in Afghanistan. The 158 Canadian Armed Forces members who had perished, many more wounded, and those who still suffer from the effect of PTSD. May we ever pray, Lord God of hosts, be with us yet, lest we forget, lest we forget. We hear now the rule of honor for Zion Church in World War I. Alexis Helmer, Army, aged 23. Foster McFarland, Air Force, aged 21. His father was at that time the minister in Zion Church. Herbert Scott, Army, aged 30. Arthur Wilson, Army, aged 22. And now from St. Giles. And Ian, just before, I, I just like to invite everyone to stand during this occasion. And for St. Giles in World War II, Frank Cran, Army, aged 27. Edward Flanagan, Army, age 23. Boyce Laidlaw, Army, age 38. Ian MacDonald, Air Force, age 19. Neil MacDonald, his brother, Army, age 25. James Miller, Navy, aged 18. William Morrison, Air Force, age 20. Charles Olmsted, Air Force, age 24. Gordon Pressland, Air Force, age 29. Bern Stewart, Army, age 31. And Arnold Watterson, Air Force, age 23. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Each shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. <laughs>
Let us now sing <clears throat> hymn 835, uh, 34, God Saves Our Gracious Queen. Our scripture reading today is taken uh, from the Old Testament pa passage of Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1 to 9. Uh, and this is a, a, a passage where Moses left for the Israelites uh, and as they were entered into uh, the land of Canaan, uh, and essentially uh, providing them a rules of warfare. Uh, and our, the commanding officer, uh, Gore Shar, uh, will be reading this passage. Thank you. Good morning. 
when you go out to war against your enemies and see horses and chariots, an army larger than your own, you shall not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God is with you, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. Before you engage in battle, the priest shall come forward and speak to the troops and shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, today you are drawing near to do battle against your enemies. Do not lose heart or be afraid or panic or be in dread of them, for it is the Lord your God who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies, to give you victory. Then the officials shall address the troops saying, has anyone built a new house but not dedicated it? He should go back to his house or he might die in the battle and another dedicate it. Has anyone planted a vineyard but not in yet enjoyed its fruit? He shall go back to his house or he might die in the battle and another may be first to enjoy its fruit. Has anyone become engaged to a woman but not yet married her? He should go back to his house or he might die in the battle and another may marry her. The officials shall continue to address the troops saying, is anyone afraid or disheartened? He should go back to his house or he might cause the heart of his comrades to melt like his own. When the officials have finished addressing the troops, then the commanders shall take charge of them. The following responsive psalm and uh, the second reading, uh, uh, we'd like to invite uh, uh, Jeffrey Hill, uh, the Regimental Association's president, uh, to lead us. I cry aloud to God, aloud, that God may hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without weary. My soul refuses to be comforted. I think of God and I moan. I meditate and my spirit faints. You keep my eyelids from closing. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old and remember the years of long ago. I commune with my heart in the night. I meditate and search my spirit. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favorable? Has God's steadfast love ceased forever? Are the Lord's promises at the end of all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has the Lord in anger shut up his compassion? And I say, it is my grief that the night hand of the Most High has changed. I will call to mind the deeds of the Lord. I will remember your wonders of old. I will meditate on all your work and muse on your mighty deeds. Our way, O God, is holy. What God is so great as our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have displayed open light among the people. With your strong arms, you redeem your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. Therefore, I intend to keep on reminding you of these things, though you know them already and are established in the truth that has come to you. I think it right 
as long as I am in this body, to refresh your memory, since I know that my death will come soon, as indeed our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. And I will make every effort so that after my departure, you may be able at any time to recall these things. This is now, beloved, the second letter I am writing to you. In them, I am trying to arouse your sincere intention by reminding you that you should remember the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Savior spoken through your apostles. This is the word of the Lord. Join me in this prayer. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. It was the year 1650. Oliver Cromwell had just taken hold of levers of power in the English parliament. His army had fought successfully in the civil war against King Charles I, whereby the king was summarily executed. Cromwell had also waged a, another separate campaign, uh, successfully uh, uh, subdued uh, the Irish uh, um, uh, not, not so long after. <clears throat> and now his attention has turned northward towards Scotland. The Scots may not have seen eye to eye with the, with the late king, but uh, he did have Scottish blood after all. So what Cromwell and the English parliament did uh, was indeed inexcusable and deserving a strong response. So the Scots then crowned it, uh, crowned uh, Charles II as king and mustered a, a good sized army under the commandership of David Leslie. A decisive battle at Dunbar was to determine the fate of the two nations for years, for decades, for centuries to come. What was interesting about this battle, at least worthy for us to remember uh, on the Remembrance Sunday is how the rank of the Scottish side was thin now. You see, a, a coalition of Presbyterian ministers, uh, and they were called the Covenanters, they bankrolled the entire war effort. I guess ministers back then were paid much better than as now. So these ministers had a, a, a lot of say in the makeup of the army. So uh, three months before the actual battle, uh, a committee for purging the army was formed. That was its actual name, a committee for purging the army. And, and talk about Presbyterians having fondness for committees. And, and so anyone anyone whose loyalty was in doubt were purged, along with those who were considered as undesirable or sinful. Now picture this, Presbyterian ministers examining the thoughts and conducts of each individual soldier and determining if individuals were uh, indeed worthy to fight in the upcoming battle. Sounds ludicrous to us now. 
but it was actually quite sensible to the Scots back then. They were not uh, just fighting a territorial war uh, or a war of secession. Uh, they were fighting a religious war, the Scottish Presbyterianism versus the English Puritans. They were fighting not only for um, how people were to be subject to their king, but how people were to be subject to their God. A cause eminently worthy to die for a, a religious war, a holy war. Thinning out the ranks is actually a time honored tradition in the scripture. The most well known uh, is probably Gideon uh, and, uh, and uh, in the time of Judges. Uh, Gideon was under God's specific instruction to vastly dwindle his army uh, from that of 32,000 down to 300. And the dramatic victory uh, that Gideon achieved subsequently uh, goes to prove uh, that when it comes to a holy war, it, it is in fact the Lord God who goes out with you and the Lord God who goes out before you to fight on your behalf. The passage in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 20, verse 1 to 9, and the one that was just read earlier, contains the instructions from Moses uh, given supposedly to the Israelite uh, before they took possession of the promised land, and before they entered into Canaan. And these instructions contain how all future warfare were supposedly to be conducted by the people of God. Whenever the people of God were assembled to do battle, the priests were supposed to declare in verse three to four, hear O Israel, today you are drawing near to do battle against your enemies. Do not lose heart or be afraid or panic or be in dread of them for it is the Lord your God who goes with you to fight for you against your enemy to give you victory. The criteria for thinning the rank includes those who had recently built a house but not yet dedicated, those who had planted vineyard but not yet enjoyed, and those uh, who were engaged to a woman but not yet married and even include those uh, who are afraid or disheartened and, and those whose heart were simply not in it uh, for the fight. Now these were gracious criteria, humane criteria, and, 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 and criteria that seek to preserve a semblance of humanity in the ugliness of war. If war really is necessary, and at times they are, then who and how it is to be conducted has as much bearing as the final outcome of victory. The process is as important as the product. The ends do not always justify the means. Coming back to the Battle of Dunbar in 1650, after the Presbyterian ministers thinned out the rank, many of the battle-hardened hardened veterans uh, were weeded out. I, I guess uh, battle-tested soldiers and virtuous life do not jive somehow. I wouldn't know. You would have to ask the soldiers here with us. David Leslie and his colonels complain that the army is really left with nothing but useless clerks and ministers' sons who had never seen a sword, much less used one. 
Nevertheless, with the Church of Scotland solidly behind the war effort, and with God seemingly also behind um, them as well, Leslie took his 12,000 men to meet the English 16,000 strong. <coughs> so just a slight numeric uh, disadvantage. Now, would anyone like to guess how uh, the end result was? Perhaps you already know from history, a disastrous defeat for the Scots. I, I won't go into details uh, about how that came to be, but only to know that out of that 12,000 combatants from the Scots, uh, the Scottish side, 9,000 of them were captured, taken as prisoners of war. And after dismissing those who were sick and injured during the battle, uh, about 5,000 of them were forced to march 100 miles southward uh, to Durnham in what some historians uh, would call it the death march to Durnham. Many perished during the march due to ex exhaustion, starvation, execution for those who tried to get away and, and uh, sickness, uh, mainly, uh, most likely dysentery. So only about 3,000 of them were alive upon arrival. And over the course of the next few months, uh, their fate were much better. Uh, more died in the present uh, and, and later buried in the mass grave. Some were sent to fight uh, in the French army. Some were uh, assigned to various different work camp uh, in around uh, the country. And, uh, and uh, some were sold off as uh, indenture servants, slaves, really. Uh, and they were sent off to colonies in the New World and uh, to Barbados, Virginia, and Massachusetts. And some eventually worked off their debts uh, and uh, settled in the southern part of Maine. Yeah, in a sense that these prisoners of war uh, were vanguards. Uh, they were the first to bring Scottish Presbyterianism into the Puritan New England. In a sense, we can call them the forefathers of Presbyterian denominations across North America. What could we, what could we learn from this story uh, from the Battle of Dunbar? Were the Presbyterian covenanters in air? in error with their cause, with their intention, or perhaps uh, with their application of the scripture, who is to say? Certainly, I don't feel qualified to render judgments on these Presbyterian ministers, but I will say that no one, at least none that I'm aware of, have ever gone out to wage a war declaring that the devil is on their side. Yet, many would claim that God is. I will also say that it is a try and true wisdom uh, as recorded in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. And I'm reading from uh, the Living Bible version. It very simply just says, man proposes but God disposes. And God sure has a funny way of making real his will, unexpectedly by us all. Stories of war and stories of faith both serve the same function. They remind us, help us to recall, so that we shall remember lest we forget, lest we forget. I will end my reflection today with these selective words from Peter the Apostle uh, in his second letters. Therefore, I intend to keep on reminding you of these things 
so that you may be able at any time to recall these things by reminding you that you shall remember the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Savior spoken through your apostles. At this time, I would also like to invite you to declare together with me uh, the confessional response, uh, response uh, that's written in the bulletin. I'd like to invite all of you to stand. This is part of the Living Faith uh, 8.5 uh, in uh, 1 to 3. Christ, the Prince of Peace, calls his followers to seek peace in the world. We know that nations have fought in self-defense and that war at times may be unavoidable, but the tragic evil that comes with war the slaughter of men, women, and children must rouse us to work for peace. We protest against the world arm race that diminishes our ability to fight hunger, ignorance, poverty, and disease. We affirm that God is at work when people are ashamed of the inhumanity of war and work for peace with justice. We pray for peace to him who is the Prince of Peace. In this time of prayer, uh, we will do so responsively. So whenever you hear, uh, I say, O oh, faithful God, and please respond, remember them, and remember them now and for all the time to come. So, O oh, faithful God, response is remember them now for all the time to come okay let us pray god of all ages past hope of years to come we gather in this season of remembrance grateful that you hold each one of us in your memory and in your mystery now and for all the time to come Together, we remember all those who have served to uphold justice and freedom in the wars of the last century, in conflicts of our own generation, and in peacekeeping and relief efforts around the world. Especially, we pray for those who have died in this service, and for those who carry scars on body and soul, have returned from conflict we remember their courage and we pray for their families who still ache for life surrender at a great cost. O oh, faithful God, remember them now and for all the time to come. O oh God, we remember before you the victims of conflict hiding in forgotten corners of the world, longing for safety and peace, Especially, we pray for the people in Afghanistan who fear for their lives and their future. We remember victims of violence in our own country, still fearful and uncertain about what the future holds for them. Give us courage to speak out for their protection and recovery. O oh, faithful God, remember them now and for all the time to come. O oh God, we remember those around us who struggle to remember day by day, those who must cope with the fear of forgetting, those who matter most to them, and those who face the fear of being forgotten. Help us remember to reach out in comfort and support so that no one is really forgotten. O oh, faithful God, remember them and for all the time to come. O oh God, we remember those around us who carry on under the burden of sad and hard memories. 
who's weighed down by grief, disappointment, anger, pain, and loss, inspire us to offer a listening ear and an understanding heart whenever we can. O oh, faithful God, remember them now and for all the time to come. God of all ages past, hope of years to come, help us to remember you day by day. Keep us prepared to shine the light of your gospel into the dark corners of the world so that needs is exposed, hope is renewed. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We're now sing hymn 736 for the healing of the nations. Please be seated. And uh, in this time, passing of the peace, uh, it is being our practice during the time of pandemic uh, that uh, we do so seated down. And I will simply acknowledge uh, those people uh, that are joining uh, from either Zoom or uh, from uh, teleconference and those who are uh, in person as well. So, let me start by acknowledging those from the teleconference. You have to dial star four to unmute. Good morning, Jane here. Hi, Jane, good morning. Good to hear from you. Thank you. Anyone else on the teleconference? Okay, so let me also acknowledge uh, those who are joining from Zoom. Uh, I see Kawaka. Hi, Kawaka. Hi there, how are you? Yeah, you're, uh, you're uh, working on your assignment today, I hear. Yeah, it's a, a long assignment, so I had to take a day to work on it. Sorry about that. Okay, no, no problem. No need to apologize. And I see uh, Neil uh, joining us from Montreal. Hi, Neil. Hello. Once again, we don't get to see you. That's my son. 
Good, okay, so uh, I'd like to acknowledge those who are in person and there are uh, a number of guests, so I may not know your name. Uh, so uh, forgive me if uh, I would ask you to identify yourself. But first, um, uh, Joel, uh, our soloist, and also Larry, our organist, uh, welcome. And thank you for uh, you continue to serve the, co the, the, the community in, in this capacity. Um, and let me go from uh, the far corner over there, uh, Bob, Brian, and uh, I see uh, David and Barbara, uh, Vincent, and also Mary Loy over there, welcome. Uh, and from uh, in the front row, uh, a number of representative from the Cameron Highlander, uh, uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Gore uh, Scharf, uh, and uh, Jay Hill, uh, uh, you were uh, the scripture reader earlier on, and also those two gentlemen. Welcome. And sir? Welcome. Uh, I see uh, there, um, <coughs> Dorothy, <laughs> I almost forgot your name, sorry, uh, Dorothy, and, uh, and uh, behind Dorothy is uh, Justin, my oldest son, uh, and uh, visiting, uh, but will be moving to Ottawa soon, I believe, uh, and he's, he's going to Carleton, so next term, uh, there will be in-person classes. Um, and, uh, Kathy over there, Kathy Campbell, welcome. And uh, over here, uh, Bill and uh, Bob and Jen. Uh, oh, <laughs> Jane, hi Jane. Uh, you change your hair a little bit. Yes, um, and uh, the gentleman. Jeremiah, Jeremiah welcome. Uh, and uh, Judy Wallace uh, over there at the back. And uh, up there, uh, 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 we have the Bugler, uh, Master Corporal um, Peter uh, Lineburner. Welcome. And also um, uh, Corporal uh, Brandon uh, Pinkerton Cock. Uh, welcome, uh, who is our, our Piper. <laughs> And, uh, and the lady sitting beside Brandon, I forgot, what? Josephine, yeah, welcome. Uh, uh, also at the back, uh, our duty elder today, Kate. Um, I see in the back row, uh, Claudia, welcome. Uh, Nick over there uh, and uh, and Roger and uh, Nancy, welcome. And Don and Kay, Tate, and also their neighbor, um, I wrote it down, Kathy, that's right, Kathy, welcome. And uh, uh, Jane Evans bef uh, in front, uh, and this gentleman here. Robert. Robert, yeah, welcome. And uh, uh, Melanie, who's visiting from Honolulu, I believe. Uh, welcome, uh, and um, Jean and Stan Curry over there, um, and uh, Nelson and Pam, welcome, good to see you, uh, and also Isaac, uh, and at the back, uh, Rob and Stuart providing technical support. Peace of the Lord be with each and every one of you. The announcements. Good morning. Welcome to St. Giles. A special welcome to all of our visitors and a welcome to all the Cameron Highlanders that joined us. A special thank you for participating in our service this morning. Uh, just a few announcements, some regular housekeeping ones. The coffee hour meets Monday mornings, and Bible study meets Friday mornings. Coffee hour at 11, Bible study at 10. Both can be joined by teleconference, and your instructions are in your bulletin there. 
Uh, just a little a heads up that Advent does begin. We will be celebrating Holy Communion on Sunday, December the 12th. And then there's just a little uh, piece for you to read a little bit of information about our connection to John McRae in your bulletin. Thank you. Uh, just an additional announcement that um, there is no coffee and, and reception at the end of the service. Uh, it's printed in the bulletin. I think what may have happened is our administrator copy paste from two years ago. Uh, so uh, we, we are still, uh, still in the pandemic rule and the session is discussing uh, about resuming coffee and reception after service. Uh, but not for this Sunday. So just a, a little word. <clears throat> and also during the <clears throat> pandemic, uh, uh, we don't pass the plate uh, to collect offering. Uh, the offering plate is at the back and we simply just ask you to uh, deposit or, or to place your envelope there. Um, the scripture today speak of reminding recalling and remembering God's graciousness and God's faithfulness and in the past and, and also now. And our generous gift today is a response to God and in hope that peace would truly one day be realized in our world. I'd like to invite everyone to stand to sing the doxology. Let us pray. O oh God, receive our gifts this day and bless them with your love and power. Use them in the struggle for justice and the work of healing and peace. Undertaken by your faithful people here and everywhere in the name of Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Let us sing hymn 624, Blessed Are They.
Go now in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you from this day and forevermore.